Casina Pio Quarto. Sì, è un appuntamento. Grazie. Yeah, we're in the car. We're headed over to the place where they only open the door every 50 years. And until then, you have to kneel down and look through the keyhole. But when you do, you see the Vatican or what looks like a picture of, well, heaven. And we're also going to the place where Peter was so committed to his faith that he told them, don't even crucify me like my Christ, but crucify me upside down. The truth is we shouldn't be asking how much does it cost to address poverty, but how much does it cost not to address? The truth is moral policies are good economic policies. Civil rights leader and social activist William Barber is half a world away in Rome right now, fighting a familiar fight to help end poverty. And we're happy to have him join us now via Zoom to talk about his mission and the conference on ending poverty, a conference that just wrapped up. Reverend Barber, we are truly honored to have you join us right now. How did you approach this conference and this mission, the awareness to uh, bring to this issue? Well, first of all, I was humbled and honored to be invited by the Vatican and to be invited by economist Jeffrey Sachs, uh, the head of the academy here. You know, this conference was very truthful and that Poverty is about policy failure and not individual failures. And then when you have 1% of the people who have more money than they can ever spend, about half of the world struggles to survive every day. The fact that we have 140 million poor and low wealth people in America, nearly 43% of the country. The fact that we have 4.7 million people who are poor and low wealth in North Carolina. Uh, we have a crisis of civilization and democracy. And the fact that we can't pass a small $310 billion a year package to take a step in the right direction, while 84% of all COVID relief went to corporations, and in 2020, billionaires made nearly $2 trillion and 8 million more people fell into poverty. And over the last, since 2001, we've spent $21 trillion in war. This is the result of policy choices. And what this conference says is that the Bible condemns it over and over again as sin. And in this conference, economists, philosophers, world leaders, uh, uh, the Pope, the Eastern Orthodox Pope are saying, this is sin, this is a spiral downward. And people of faith, along with the moral agency of poor and low-wealth people, can't be silent anymore. We must commit to being poor in spirit, which means we're committed to fraternity and brotherhood and sisterhood, love, justice, and speaking the truth, because we do not have a scarcity of resources in the world we have a scarcity of moral consciousness that we must change for the very sake of this world. And we have to say that's the way out. We cannot continue like this. Reverend Barber, do you believe in your heart that the people at this conference will be able to walk away with actionable items to address this poverty? And what will that look like? Well, not only do I believe it, I know they will. There was a deep commitment. You know, this is frightening with these stats, but it's also impending and inspiring. We know we have to have no other choice. 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights guaranteed everybody had, should not have basic rights. 70 years and we've done, not done it. But now in this world, we have the resources to do it, the ideas to do it. We just have to have the movement. So I, I said the other day that we were going to have a mass poor people's low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington next year, June 18th. The, the room resounded with, 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 with support. They even said, we need to talk about making this a worldwide day. We need a worldwide poor people's campaign and a global call to moral revival. On June 18, 2022, we are planning a mass poor people's and low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington, regardless of how the Build Back Better plan passes. And we are hoping 
that others will join in their countries around the world. Uh, we have to, you know, build power among the poor and the well, change the narrative, and show this world that it is morally inconsistent, it's constitutionally uh, uh, indefensible, and it's, 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 it's economically insane to continue down this path. And we don't have to. Also, I can't read it to you today, but there's going to be a major letter coming from this conference, signed by world leaders and people at this conference, to the G20 to say that at the top of the agenda, we must decide that we as a world will and can end poverty. And it's not just an idealistic dream of some folk that's just, you know, kind of uh, 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 happy. It is possible that the, the resources are there, the ideas are there. We have to decide as a world to embrace the kind of moral consciousness and movement necessary to do it. Religious leaders must join with the poor and engage in the public square, not simply in the confines of the sanctuary. We must take the sanctuary to the public square. And so I pray with you in the words of the hymn writer, cure thy children's war and madness, bend our pride to thy control, shame our wanton selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss our kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the search for thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this power. Thank you so much.